All right, Pebble Beach. I believe they say the greatest uh, meeting of land and sea in the world. Who said that? I don't know. I think they Was it Mark Twain? <laughs> yeah, like the coldest winter <laughs> yeah, exactly. I ever spent was to San Francisco. Um, they but, do say that about Pebble Beach. Obviously, one of the most iconic uh, venues, golf courses in uh, American golf, the entire world of golf. One of the most famous places, I, I'd say, you know, in the world is in, in terms of just relative sport. I think it's, it's golf, one of golf's greatest stadiums and uh, a place that every golfer wants to go see. Uh, what about Pebble Beach stands out to you? Well, I mean, like what about Pebble Beach doesn't stand out to you? It, it's hard to even discuss it because, first of all, it's so familiar to people. And also because it's just completely overwhelming when you step on the property. You know, when you're there, you're there for a dream trip, really, right? You're, you're there to just take it all in and be impressed by what's in front of you. And the piece of land that Pebble Beach sits on, that the golf course sits on, really delivers. Like it's, it's such an extraordinary piece of land. Now, unlike most really great golfing terrain, it is not sandy, right? It's not like Cypress Point down the road, which has a lot of sand. It's not like that one section of Spyglass Hill. It is a clay-based site. So it really doesn't have that soil that a lot of great golf courses have. But what it does have is incredible, dramatic topography slope across the property, and then obviously this coastline that's super famous. Pretty much any golfer can envision what it looks like immediately. But the more I've gotten to know Pebble Beach and the land that it sits on, and the more I've compared it to other seaside courses, I think what's really extraordinary about Pebble Beach's property is the size of the coastline features, if that makes sense. The size of the coves, the size of that peninsula that the seventh hole sits on, the size of that stretch along Carmel Beach, it's all perfectly scaled for golf. There are just golf holes that you can just put there. And coastline isn't always like that. You know, sometimes the landforms are bigger, sometimes they don't immediately lend themselves to golf courses and golf holes. But what's great about Pebble Beach's land is that all those little nooks and crannies of the coastline are just perfect for these golf holes. It's just extraordinary. Yeah, something like that that made me think of that is some of the micro contours in the ground too. It's not just about, you know, a lot of coastlines are just, you just have this gradual slope. There, there are also some little micro contours, um, you know, in the run up to six. There's the little kind of ridges that run into the green. Uh, if you think about nine, um, there's a nice little like kind of roll in the fairway. There are these little moments of interruption. Um, sometimes it's coves that break it up, but then there are also there are micro contours in the ground that break it up. And that's what makes it such a good golfing landscape. I think when you're talking about Pebble Beach as a golf course in, in, a, in a test, when you get beyond just the, the sheer awe, like every time I walk out to Pebble Beach, I'm just like amazed that it exists. But when you start to examine why it's such a tough test and um, why it's been able to stand up over this time with being one of the shorter courses is there are small targets. The greens are, are probably smaller than they should be. They need to be restored back to their original sizes, but you're always hitting from different lies. It's kind of got like a little bit of Augusta National in the sense that you're never seemingly hitting from a flat lie to a flat target. It's always weird lies, small targets, and wind because you're right on the coast. So the conditions at Pebble Beach just make it a very uncomfortable place to play golf. It's, it's just hard to ever feel like you get your bearings and like are hitting shots that you're used to hitting on the driving range. To give an idea of how this works, and it is, it's the, it's the one feature of Pebble Beach that you don't understand on TV, is the slope of the property and the way that so many of the fairways kind of sit right across these slopes. And so a good example of this is on the ninth hole, right? Par four, 
that runs along the coastline. It's a little ways away from the coastline. There used to be a little fairway right down by the cliffs, but that's not there anymore. But the really prominent feature on this hole is the big slope of the fairway. You're hitting off of a surface where the ball is well below your feet. And guess what is the bad miss right. on this hole? It's to the right. <laughs> and whether you're a left-hander or a right-hander, when the ball is below your feet for a right-hander or above your feet for a left-hander, your tendency is to miss right. And if you miss right on the ninth hole, you're on Carmel Beach. And that dynamic repeats itself throughout the golf course. And so what this course really rewards is the ability to control your ball off of a variety of lies, to really you know, hit golf shots that don't just kind of go with the flow of the land. In certain spots, you have to work against the land. You have to keep your ball straight or maybe even curve it the opposite direction against the land in order to be successful. And that's why great ball strikers tend to thrive at Pebble Beach. Yeah, a great example of that is the 14th also, the, the par five. It's a long par five, one of the hardest par fives every year, year in, year out on the PGA Tour. And the reason it's so hard, it's pretty much a three shot hole usually, but the way the ground, the ground moves right to left. And you know, you want to hit a fade on your second shot, your layup shot, which is hard to do off that hanging lie so it's hard to get that ball into the lay the right layup area but then one of the hardest shots in golf is a ball above your feet for a right hander with a wedge because that's when you know what the more loft is on the club the more left it's gonna go and when you get those wedges into a small elevated target with a repelling false front you have to you know it plays uphill you have to hit it the exact right number you have to control the spin but also you know you're choking up because the ball's above your feet and the ball's going left so it's just those confluence of elements with the wind and the, the slopes combined with the topography are what really make Pebble Beach cook. Another thing that makes Pebble Beach really special, aside from its use of the topography, is just the story that the routing tells. A lot of the best routings in golf, especially ones on really spectacular land or that have a piece of land with like one spectacular feature, is that they kind of tell you a story involving that feature. At Pebble Beach, the feature is the coastline. And so this routing really takes you through a little drama about the coastline. You start inland, you cannot see the ocean from the first hole. Then you get to number two, which is a par five, fairly straight, and you catch little glimpses of what's coming from there. At that point, you can kind of see glimpses here and there of the ocean. Then the third hole takes a left turn. It's a par four, dog legs to the left. And when you take that turn, that's the big moment. The ocean opens up in front of you. Then you're on to number four, right by the ocean. So you're on the ocean holes at that point. But the way the ocean holes work in this routing is that they kind of get more and more dramatic from four through eight, even through nine and 10, which are also spectacular, but maybe slightly less so than six, seven, and eight, which are really the climax. So when you're at four, you're just by Stillwater Cove, which is what it sounds like. It's kind of a peaceful little area. And then you play five, the, the new par three by Jack Nicholas, that's also along the same cove. And then the big next reveal of the round is on six, where you climb that spectacular peninsula that the sixth green, the short seventh hole, and the eighth hole play on. And that is, that, that's, I mean, it's, it's such a huge moment when you see that cliff and you get to walk up it, get to play over it. It's barely, barely uh, sized for golf, right? It's almost too big. Yeah, that, that going up six is, is just, it's a huge walk. And I think that's the cool thing is you go up on six, down on seven, 
up and then over on eight is just, it's thrilling. And then, you know, it, it does get a little bit more subdued. You have some, some inland holes, some, you know, they get, they get some flack. I think there's a couple good holes in the inland portion. Um, and again, you're fighting that terrain. And then you come, they, it brings you back for one last kind of uh, reveal. You know, I think the general inclination is like, it would be amazing to have all holes on the ocean. By jogging between going in, getting out on there, coming back in, and then bringing it back, it kind of builds anticipation and creates these really memorable moments, right? Yep, it's a figure eight, basically, when you look at it from above. And so, yeah, you have that little lull in the middle of the round. Like, it, it, you take your foot off the gas a little bit, and you get to, you know, it's not just all one hit after another because it would start to get a little bit overwhelming after a while. So you get the spectacular oceanside holes kind of in the, you know, early middle part of the round. And then when you get back there on 17 and 18, you know, boom, that's, that's like a huge finale. And so it's just a perfectly structured routing that, again, tells you a story about that cliffside setting. And I think that the land at Pebble Beach wouldn't be as much appreciated if the routing weren't so good. So we've talked about the routing. We've talked a few, about a few holes. What is your favorite hole out of Pebble Beach? It's not a super original choice, but I love the sixth hole. It's one of my top five holes, I think, that I've ever played. It's one of the great holes in the world. The main part of why I love it is just because of that big cliff that you play over. I mean, it's such a gutsy thing for the routing just to go right over that cliff. Imagine being the architect and sitting there on that piece of land and saying, yeah, we're just going to put a hole right over that thing. It, it was an inspired choice to do it, and it's just an, an unforgettable uh, moment in your round. But there are some kind of subtle strategies on that hole that, that you can use if you're so inclined. If you play a little bit close to the cliffs on the right side, that shortens the hole a little bit, and it also gives you a more level lie. And so I think attacking the green from down there is a bit easier. My favorite thing about the six, and this is just a favorite thing about blind shots, is the six has this unbelievable um, anticipation when you're down there and you hit a shot up and you you don't know exactly where the target is you're staring at the sky the energy going up that hill wondering do I have a good look for Eagle is is unbelievable it makes that hill so much easier to get up there's so many great holes out there and, and I love the six um, you know one that is a little bit calmer of a hole. I, I love, and it's your, your first seaside hole, the fourth is really a hole that I enjoy. Um, it's got a very wide fairway. Um, if you play safe away from the water, there's a lot of bunkers over there. And it's, it's you know, you, if you find a bunker, you got a really hard wedge shot out of a bunker. The, what I love about it is the way the green is super narrow and it's a longer green that orients directly to the right side. So if you hit a shot towards the water, you know, which is a crazy thing to do. It's a very, it's very hard. It's just like a, a creek or a, a pond at another course, but there's something about a cliff in an ocean that scares you more. And it's get so hard to get yourself to hit it over to the right. And there's a lot of space over there. But if you hit it over there, you have such an easier wedge shot than if you're approaching from the left. And it's hard to bypass 18, arguably the greatest uh, finishing hole in all of golf. But something about the fourth, the and I'll always remember getting there and you get out onto that fairway and you're looking at Stillwater Cove, you see what's ahead and it's just an amazing point in the round. Yeah, and probably the most underrated cliffside hole at Pebble Beach. It's hard to say that there are any underrated holes along that stretch because they're all so famous, but I think four is probably the one that gets overlooked a bit. You know, 10 is also a world-class hole. As you mentioned, 18 is an amazing, amazing, kind of perfect finisher uh, for the golf course. 
And so there are so many high points in the round at Pebble Beach. There are so many moments when you're just going to kind of stop and look around and say to yourself, I can't believe I'm here. And I think that's the, the Pebble Beach magic. That's why every golfer should try to find a way here, whether it's seeing a tournament at Pebble Beach or whether it's actually getting to play the course. It is a must experience course. It's just something that you have to do, something that you have to see by the end of your golfing life.